everyone. In this unit, we are going to talk about writing I the formulas for ionic compounds. I'm going to briefly go over how to do it, and then I'll show you some examples on the dry erase board, and then I'll give you guys some time to practice as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this unit, we are talking about writing ionic compounds. Um, so the first thing you always want to do is you want to write the symbol for each element or the polyatomic ion. The second thing you want to do is you want to add parentheses if it already has a subscript. So remember the subscripts are the numbers that are written at the bottom. The third thing that you want to do is write the charges for each element or the polyatomic ion. And then the fourth step would be to crisscross the charges. So the charge for one is going to be the subscript for the other. Now I know it might seem a little bit confusing. I'm going to do some examples on the board in just a minute. Some things I want to refresh your memory. Anything in group 1 is going to have a positive 1 charge. Anything in group 2 is going to have a positive 2 charge. And anything in group 3 is going to have a positive 3 charge. Remember, typically the metals are on the left side of the periodic table, so that's why anything in groups 1, 2, and 13 all have the positive charge because they are the metals. 15, 16, and 17 are your non-metals, which is why they're going to have the negative charge because they're going to gain the electrons, okay? So 15 will have a negative 3 charge, 16 will have a negative 2, and 17 will have a negative 1. Just a refresher on your Roman numerals in case you forgot, those are there as well. And finally, your polyatomic ions. I'm not going to make you um, memorize the polyatomic ions if you're not in my honors or my AP class, but they are here as well if you need a reference sheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and get and do some practice together. Um, if you click on the link, I would either have the charges, the Roman numerals, and the polyatomic ions up, or if you have your naming formula sheet, you can pull that up as well. Um, but let's go ahead and do some practice. I'm going to make my screen a full screen so you could see the dry erase board fully, and you can see all the ones that we're doing, all the problems that we're going to do together. Okay? Right, here we go. So the first one we're going to do is potassium bromide. So you want to write the symbols first. So potassium bromide is number one. Okay, so the symbol for potassium we know is K. The symbol we know for bromide is Br. So the first thing you always want to do is write your symbols. The next thing you want to do is write your charges. Okay, so potassium is in group 1. So anything in group 1 is going to have a positive 1 charge. Bromine or bromide is in group 17. Anything in group 17 has a negative 1 charge, if you look at your chart. Now, since this is a positive one, this is a negative one, they simply cancel each other out. So then our answer is KBr. We don't have to crisscross anything in here because it's a positive and a negative and they just cancel each other out. Okay? All right, let's do the next one. So the next one is calcium fluoride. So we have calcium fluoride. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is write the symbols. Our symbol for calcium is Ca. Our symbol for fluoride is F. Okay, now we need to fill in the charges. Calcium is in group 2. Anything in group 2 has a positive 2 charge. Okay, fluoride or fluorine is in group 17, so anything in 17 has a negative 1 charge. Now since these charges are different, we need to crisscross them. The 2 is going to come down and the 1 will come down. So we're going to crisscross. So our final answer then will be C, A, the 1 comes down, but we don't write 1's at the bottom, F, 2, the 2 comes down. So our final answer is C, A, F, 2. Um, we never write 1's at the bottom, it's kind of like when you talk about H2O, you don't say H2O1, so we don't write 1's at the bottom, okay? Alright, let's do the next one together. 
So the next one is copper to bromide. Okay, so we have copper to bromide. Okay, so we write our symbols first. The symbol for copper is Cu. The symbol for bromide is Br. So now we're going to write the charges. Now since copper is a transition metal, we go by the Roman numeral. If there's a Roman numeral there, that's always the charge that you use first. So since copper has a Roman numeral of 2, we know it's going to have a plus 2 charge. So bromide, then, we need to get the charge for that. Bromide is in group 17. Anything in group 17 has a negative 1 charge. Remember, I gave you that chart with all the charges on. So now we crisscross. Okay? So now we crisscross and we do C U B R 2. The 1 comes down to the bottom of copper, but we don't write the 1. And the 2 goes to the bottom of BR. Okay? All right, let's try another one together. The next one we're going to do is ammonia carbonate. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write the symbols. Now this one is a little bit different and has two polyatomic ions, but that's okay. So if you look at our polyatomic ion sheet, we know that ammonium has a chart, has the symbols of NH4. Okay, carbonate's symbol, if you look at your polyatomic ion sheet, is CO3. Okay. Now that you have the formulas, we can go ahead and write the charges. Okay, the charge for ammonium is a positive one, and I'm going to put that in parentheses since it already has a subscript, so this is a positive one. Carbonate has a subscript already too, so I'm going to put it in parentheses, and it has a charge of negative two. Okay, so now we can crisscross. I'm going to leave the parentheses there, so when we crisscross, the charges come down and they stay outside the parentheses. Okay, so we have NH4, we keep the parenthesis, and the 2 comes down and it stays outside of the parenthesis. Now we have CO3, I'm going to keep it in parentheses, and we bring the 1 down. But remember, you don't have to write the 1, so you can always erase it. So then this would be our final answer, NH4 2 CO3. Okay? I'm going to do one more with you guys. All oh, my markers go rolling. All right, let's do another one together. So the next one we're going to do is aluminum cyanide. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our symbols. Our symbol for aluminum is Al. Our symbol for cyanide, cyanide is a polyatomic ion, so it's on your sheet, is Cn. So C and N are both capital. All right, now we're going to write our charges. Aluminum is in group 13, so it's going to have a positive 3 charge. Cyanide, if you look at your polyatomic ion sheet, has a negative 1. And since it's a polyatomic ion, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So now we can crisscross. The 3 comes down and the 1 comes down. So we have Al. The 1 comes down, but we don't write 1s. Cn is in parentheses because it's a polyatomic ion. And the 3 will go on the outside of that. Okay? Perfect. How are we doing so far? Okay. We doing okay? Great. So I want you guys to pause the video and I want you to try the next 
five on your own. Okay, try the next five on your own and then you can restart it and I will go over them with you. Okay, all right, here's your next five. Hopefully you pause the video, you practice on your own and I'm gonna go over them with you. All right, so the first one that you had to do was aluminum carbonate. We have aluminum. Carbonate. All right, so we write our symbols first. Our symbol for aluminum is Al. Our symbol for carbonate, if you look at the polyatomic ion sheet, is CO3. The next thing we're going to do is write the charges. So the aluminum is in group 13, so we know anything in group 13 has a charge of positive 3. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion, so it's going to go in parentheses. And carbonate, if you look at the polyatomic ion sheet, has a charge of negative 2. So now we can crisscross. The 3 comes down, the 2 comes over. So we have Al2. Now CO3 must go in parentheses, and that 3 is going to stay there. This 3 simply comes down and goes on the outside. I didn't add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I just simply crisscross. There is no math involved here. Okay? Let's try the next one, manganese oxide. So the next one is manganese oxide. All right, so we write our symbols first. Our symbol for manganese is MN. Oxide is oxygen, so that's O. So we write the symbols. Oh, I think manganese was had a 4 in it as well, so let me write that there. So manganese has a 4, so that's a plus 4 charge. Oxide is in group 16, so that's a negative 2. So now we can crisscross. We have MN, the 2 comes down, and we have O4. Now, since these can be reduced, we can actually reduce them to get MnO2. They're both divisible by 2. Okay? All right. Let me erase, and we can go on to the next one. Hopefully, you got these right when you tried them on your own. If not, you are seeing where you made an error, and you can correct it for the next time. So we have calcium carbonate. So our symbol for calcium is Ca. Our symbol for carbonate is CO3. And since it's a polyatomic ion, we're going to go ahead and put it in parentheses. Now we write the charges. Calcium is in group 2. Anything in group 2 has a positive 2 charge. Carbonate has a charge of negative 2 if you look at your polyatomic ion sheet. So since this is a positive 2, this is a negative 2. They cancel each other out, and you get CaCO3 because the 2s cancel each other out. Okay? All right, we have two more that we're going to do together. All right, antimony phosphate. All right, so we write our symbol for antimony. Antimony is Sb. Phosphate, we know, is PO4, okay? If we look at it, antimony is in group 15. Anything in group 15 has a positive 3 charge. We know that phosphate is a polyatomic ion, so it gets parentheses and has a negative 3 according to the chart. Since this is a positive 3, this is a negative 3. They cancel each other out, and we get SBPO. And that's our final answer. All right, we have one more to do together. We have magnesium phosphide. Okay. 
So we write our symbols first. Our symbol for magnesium is Mg. Phosphide is simply phosphorus, so it's P. Now we can write the charges in. Magnesium is in group 2, remember, so anything in group 2 has a positive 2 charge. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it's a negative 3 charge. So then we can crisscross. We have Mg, the 3 comes down, and then P and 2. So that's our final answer. Okay? So, I hopefully that you guys are starting to get it. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, make sure you do the practice, and let me know. Bye, guys.